Okay. Greetings, Monty. 81,568. I looked at your video on your uh, HHO gas receipts. Um, from what I can tell, your your uh, receipt images on your video are blurred, so um, I'm going to assume that you are measuring how much fuel is going into your vehicle's fuel tank every time that you purchase um, gasoline for it and then comparing that with your odometer to see how many miles you are getting in between uh, filling up your fuel tank. Um, as I mentioned several times in previous videos and also um, in the comment section of your video this is not a very accurate way of measuring fuel economy for a vehicle. If you want to actually measure fuel economy of a vehicle with a adequate uh, level of confidence and accuracy, you need to put the vehicle on a load cell dynamometer with an emissions counter attached to the um, exhaust pipe. And then you put the vehicle through a set um, series of speed test and shift test and other things uh, which the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Transportation here in the United States <coughs> have specified how long at what speed to test the vehicles to get a baseline for how many miles per gallon or kilometers per liter that a vehicle gets. If you're not doing this, you will not get an accurate miles per gallon by doing driving tests. Um, you can get in the ballpark, you might get within 15% or so, or 20% or so. But you will notice that the people who promote these devices will say that they're getting maybe 15 or 20% fuel economy with their devices well within error bars of driving tests. Uh, fuel economy when you're doing driving, city driving or highway driving, vary enormously depending on driving conditions. The time of day will modify your air pressure in your tires, for example. If it's a cool day, you'll have a little less air pressure in your tire, vehicle's tires. If it is a hot day, the pavement is hot, the pressure will be higher in your tires. Driving conditions, people drive differently in traffic and uh, how heavy the traffic is. Driving conditions, city, highway, of course, are totally different. Stopping and starting. If there's a accident on the highway, driving conditions will change. And driving speed, of course, changes. Um, a hell of a lot of variables involved that will not give you an accurate fuel economy measurement merely by filling the vehicle's tank uh, several times and seeing how many miles per gallon um, you are achieving in between fill ups, fill ups. Uh, even taking the averages over a dozen or so will not give you an accurate value for miles per gallon. If you want an accurate, uh, fairly accurate drive test fuel economy measurement, you have to do a great many fill ups over long driving distances over many different conditions and I don't see any person out there testing these devices, believing that they're testing them accurately. I don't see any of them doing that. My suggestion is park the vehicle, put it in park, test the device while the vehicle is in one position, stationary, have a precisely measured volume of fuel um, outside external to the vehicle. You can put a f uh, internal fuel pump in the external um, fuel tank. Um, most cars these days have a fuel pump um, it internally. You can put a fuel pump externally if the vehicle will accept that. 
use maybe a gallon of fuel, see how long the vehicle will run, let the vehicle run out of fuel, time, measure with a stopwatch how long it takes a particular volume of fuel to be uh, consumed by the vehicle. Do that four or five times without the oxyhydrogen device uh, running, but with the oxygen uh, device actually running at the same time but not connected to the air intake. You actually pull the the tube from the oxyhydrogen device, you pull that out of your air intake and let it just dangle uh, in under the hood. Plug the hole with duct tape. Test that three or four times, how long it will run for a gallon of gas. Then put your oxyhydrogen tube back into your air intake. Um, test that a few times with the oxyhydrogen um, gas going into your air intake. Then do it again. Take the tube out, pl plug the hole with duct tape, run the test a few more times, take off the duct tape, put the tube back in, run the test a few more times. You will get a fairly accurate idea of your fuel economy that way. <clears throat> and in every single test, you want the oxyhydrogen device running. When the tube is out of your air intake uh, and your, your, the hole in your air intake is plugged with uh, duct tape, you still want the oxyhydrogen device running because it is consuming energy. Um, you want everything, every variable that you can think of to be exactly the same as you're running your test. Until people out there who are testing oxyhydrogen devices in their vehicles do that, they are not going to get an accurate um, fuel economy test. They will not see any differences that fall uh, well outside the error bars um, unless they test, test their device and their vehicle properly. I believe you will find no difference when you test the device properly when the device is on during all tests. If you test the device <coughs> pardon me and turn the device off and on between tests you will find that when the device is on fuel economy decreases. It will not increase. It will decrease. This is what we see when these devices are properly tested. Nobody out there selling these devices will actually test the device properly and you have to ask yourself why they won't do that. 